Your heart is at the heart of everything you do. And if you have heart failure, there's Entresto. Entresto has proven superior at helping people stay alive and out of the hospital. Don't take Entresto if pregnant. It can cause harm or death to an unborn baby. Don't take Entresto with an ACE inhibitor or allosferin, or if you've had angioedema with an ACE or ARB. The most serious side effects are angioedema, low blood pressure, kidney problems, or high blood potassium. Ask your doctor about Entresto. How's it happening now? Beto O'Rourke makes a stop in San Antonio just 24 hours after announcing his run as candidate for governor of Texas. His priorities for this campaign and what Governor Abbott has to say coming up. Cooped up during the pandemic was a lonely time for a lot of people. Coming up, meet a couple who spent their time writing a book with the help of internet art lessons, a magnifying glass, and a lot of wit and wisdom. If you can't stand the heat, we've really only got one more day to go. A cold front is on the way. We'll be talking about that in the forecast. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at 5, just 24 hours after announcing his run for Texas Governor Beto O'Rourke has hit the campaign trail starting in San Antonio. O'Rourke made things official yesterday in a tweet saying, quote, I'm running for governor. O'Rourke lost a close race for Senate in 2018 against Senator Ted Cruz and then later ran for president in 2020. So now he's challenging Texas Governor Greg Abbott in the 2022 race. Alicia Barrera has more on O'Rourke's priorities and Governor Abbott's response. A larger than expected crowd turned out in support of Beto O'Rourke. The first 2022 Texas gubernatorial Democratic candidate to stop in San Antonio. This is a great example of why I feel confident about our chances. A chance to turn the state blue with his top priorities that include voters' rights and health care in rural communities. We have got to expand Medicaid in this state, especially at a time that the federal government is paying 95 cents on the dollar for care. O'Rourke also slammed the constitutional carry law signed by Governor Abbott, which allows anyone 21 years or older to carry a gun without a license. Extremist, that's dangerous. However, in a press conference on Monday in Floresville, Governor Greg Abbott said O'Rourke has a tough race ahead. He wants to go take your guns and deny you your Second Amendment rights. Abbott was also skeptical of Democrats' ability to win over Hispanic voters. The values of the Hispanic community are tied and closely connected to the Republican Party not the Democrat Party. We should never assume or predict how anyone's going to vote based on their ethnicity or their race. Another main issue that will certainly draw Texans to the polls will be energy reliability. Uh, with the winter freeze, all of us were affected. It did not matter who, what your party was, what your gender was, what your race was. Everyone was horribly affected by that. Well, over the, summer, over the summer, Governor Abbott did sign two bills saying, quote, it will fix all the flaws, but experts with energy say more work is needed. But the O'Rourke also agrees with that. And while O'Rourke didn't provide an exact solution of how it could be fixed, he said that it will take basic competence and leadership, specifically focus on Texans to keep the power on. And another issue that, of course, will draw more voters out to the polls will be the issue on women's reproductive rights, especially after one of the most restrictive laws was signed into effect here in Texas in May. Steve Ursula, back to you. Thank you, Alicia. An update now on a man who was found dead in the street early Sunday morning. He's now been identified as 49-year-old Juan Miguel Mendez Luna. Officers were called to a shooting on Cincinnati Avenue near Woodlawn Lake. When they got there, they found the 49-year-old was lying on the ground with multiple stabbings. He died at the scene. No one has been arrested. The San Antonio firefighters say an electrical problem is to blame for an early morning home fire. That fire broke out about 4.30 this morning in the 200 block of Crane Avenue. That's near Southeast Military on the south side. As crews were arriving to the scene, they say they saw heavy smoke in the front room of the home. There were two people inside the home at the time of the fire. Both of them were able to get out. Fire officials say they had a difficult time entering that home, though. The house was very cluttered. Uh, had a hard, we had a hard time getting through it and finding, uh, you know, doing the primary search. Thank goodness everybody was out when we got there. The residents, the neighbors took the residents in and keeping them out of the weather. 
But fire officials say they believe an extension cord left underneath the sofa may have played a role in causing this fire. The people who lived at the home getting help from the Red Cross tonight. Kids need a safe space to open up about their serious issues, and sometimes that person isn't the parent, it's a youth pastor. That is why youth ministry leaders across the region are getting trained to learn the signs of child sex trafficking and what to do if they do see something. The training is hosted by Ransomed Life, a nonprofit serving victims and educating the public on prevention, spotting signs like kids getting packages or expensive gifts from an unknown person feeling depressed, acting like they're hiding something or keeping their phones on in their rooms late at night. I think the thing that was really eye opening for me was the digital impact and how these kids are being approached through Snapchat, through Instagram, and they portray themselves as being uh, another youth and pretty soon they're sucked into a conversation that they can't get out of. Cibolo Creek Community Church Youth Leader Rick Scheel learned in the training that it's crucial to stay calm and talk to kids on their level so that they can feel safe opening up. Anyone needing guidance or information can visit the Ransom Life website, Education Hub. We are waiting in Kenosha, Wisconsin. The jury's still deliberating in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. They began around 9 o'clock this morning. The 18-year-old charged with shooting three people, killing two of them during racial injustice protests there last year. He's facing life in prison if he's convicted on the most serious charge, first-degree intentional homicide. ABC's Rena Roy is there with the latest from Kenosha. Kyle Rittenhouse is facing life in prison, and it's up to 12 jurors to decide if he will. Earlier in court, the teenager was asked to draw juror numbers from this raffle-style box at random. Ultimately, seven women and five men, including one person of color, chosen to deliberate. The six others will serve as alternates. Less than two hours into deliberations, the jury asking for extra copies of their instructions, specifically pages that discuss self-defense and provocation, among other issues. This is a more complicated case than most than any, frankly, that I can remember. The jury examining mountains of evidence, including this drone video, which prosecutors say shows Rittenhouse putting down a fire extinguisher and raising his AR-15 rifle before shooting. He's accused of shooting three people, killing two of them during police shooting protests last year. You're not allowed to run around and point your gun at people. This is the provocation. This is what starts this incident. You cannot claim self-defense against a danger you create. The defense claims Rittenhouse was acting in self-defense. Kyle was not an active shooter. That is a buzzword that the state wants to lash on to. Whenever Kyle was there, he reacted to people attacking him. And as you can see behind us, some protesters have already started gathering outside the courthouse. But for now, police say there is no reason to close any streets or implement a curfew. Rena Roy, ABC News, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Definitely not feeling like uh, November out there. In fact, we are very warm. 86 degrees in Del Rio for the high temperature, even up in Lakey in the higher elevations, 80 degrees in Joanne's backyard, 79 in Seguin, 80 in Floresville, 81 in Universal City, and 80 in Lavernia. Now, here in San Antonio tonight, it will not get chilly after the sun sets here shortly. In fact, it'll just be mild. We'll still be in the upper 60s by midnight. Now, if you're not a fan of the warmer weather. We do have a cold front on the way and it's going to be a bit of a doozy, especially when it comes to winds and morning temperatures. So I've got to look ahead in just a few minutes. Steve. Thank you, Sarah. Part of the new infrastructure bill includes a new mandate for automakers. Technology that detects drunk drivers must be standard on all vehicles. Our Samuel King joins us now. Mothers Against Drunk Driving welcoming this bill's passage, Sam. Steve and Ursula, they say they've been pushing for years to get this implemented. They call it the most significant life-saving legislation in the group's more than 40-year history. Within a matter of years, all new vehicles will be required to have monitoring systems that would stop intoxicated drivers from operating vehicles. This could include sensors or cameras that monitor a driver's head or eyes. Technology has existed for years. It is available as an option on many vehicles. Mad says drunk driving grew as an issue during the pandemic, and this legislation could go a long way toward helping the situation. 
and in traffic uh, this evening. Let's take a look here at downtown at uh, I-35 at Cesar Chavez. You can see uh, there's some or normal slowdowns. There's also a crash uh, reported here a little bit earlier, so you're down to 14 miles per hour approaching uh, that stretch, and then you see some red here going southbound there on 35 as well. Also have a crash report in 1604 close to 151 on the west side. We're also seeing our daily delays there 17 minutes now between loop 410 and 1604 on 151. Ursula. Thanks, Samuel. Now to the latest on the COVID-19 pandemic. More states are defying federal regulators and allowing everyone 18 and older to get their booster shot. It comes as several U.S. states are showing concern over a potential holiday surge. New York, New Jersey, and Arkansas, the latest states to offer widespread booster shots. 21 states are seeing hospitalizations climb upwards 10% in the last week. Frontline workers in Colorado feeling the strain too. If you haven't uh, gotten vaccinated or you haven't gotten your third shot, uh, please reconsider. Go do it. We need a break. Pfizer has already asked the FDA to authorize booster shots for all adults. Officials say that authorization is expected to come down soon. A big name in Bear County is running for county judge. Working on for six o'clock. Judge Peter Sakai is in the race for county judge after stepping down from the bench. And then just yesterday, State Representative Ina Minjadez announcing her candidacy for that position. And there was yet another well known name who's thinking about it. Jesse Degollado talks to all three now that current Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf has said he is not seeking re election. Plus, as Bernie continues to grow, residents tell me they're super excited about the recent announcement made by the Baptist Health System that they'd be building a hospital campus here in the city. What does that mean for the community? Coming up. That is some of what we're working on for the news at 6. Steve, we'll send it back to you. All right, Myra, I'll see you then. Well, they say everybody has a story. In the case of an 89-year-old retired Air Force colonel, he has a book full. You can credit Tough Times and his wife, who says she's the burr under his saddle. Marilyn Moritz has their story. He's still going. 68 is a lot of years to be married. You go first. But to Jerry and Lucille Bullock, 16 months seemed longer. We were so fortunate to have each other. This cozy apartment is where they spent monotonous days in pandemic isolation, protected but missing people, feeling forgotten. Lonesome. So as the calendar turned, we thought now is the time to do it. Write a book. This book, my uncle Nathan just published in paperback. It's a collection of life stories. Jerry jokes, some are even true, all punctuated with wit and wisdom. They are faith based, but they're not preachy. Jerry, an Air Force colonel turned Baptist preacher, is the writer and illustrator, thanks to the internet. I took art lessons so that I could illustrate the book. Gripping the pencils in his shaky hand, he sketched each story, like the one about the girl who moved to Texas. My mama says God ain't got to Texas yet, and she's not sure he's coming. A writer needs a stickler of an editor. That's Lucille, magnifying glass in hand. He had to stay after school to diagram sentences, but it didn't take. <laughs> it just, uh, he doesn't know a noun from a verb. The book is part Texas history, part humor. Lucille edited that too. No, he tells them I think we're not funny. We took him out of the book. I said, that's not even funny. But in the gospel, according to Jerry, you can find humor just about anywhere. They're not sure anyone will even read the book and it won't be a bestseller, but it is a classic and mine, it's even autographed. Thanks for telling the story, Jerry Bullock. These two have another book in the works, but that's another story. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I like that, the burr under her saddlebone. I, do, I like just the, the wit that we got just from that <laughs> yeah, interview. Yeah. yeah. All right, coming up, the holiday spirit making its way to Travis Park. Still ahead, we're going to take a look at this year's HEV Christmas tree and when that tree will be decorated. Plus, a trucking company bringing more jobs to San Antonio, where the company will be located, and how many jobs we're talking about. Next. Navistar, a truck making company bringing new jobs to the city's south side, the new plant located off Highway 281 west of South Flores. They're hiring about 300 positions. They're looking for engineers, production assembly workers, maintenance technicians and more. 
Uh, you don't need any experience for assembly. Uh, hourly people can apply. Uh, we'll train them on the skill sets that they need. KSAT actually took an inside look at the new Navistar plant this morning. It's almost a million square feet, has a body shop, paint shop, general assembly building, and a logistics center. You can watch the full story on our website, KSAT.com. We also have a link to apply. Production set to begin starting in January. From those jobs on the south side to a bit of Christmas downtown, the 2021 HEB Christmas tree jingling its way to Travis Park today. It comes all the way from northern Michigan and is a 50 foot tall concolor fir. The tree is going to be decorated with more than 10,000 lights and handmade ornaments. An in person celebration at the tree's arrival will take place next Friday. And you can find more information on our website, ksat.com. It's a pretty one. Can't wait to see it all decorated and ready to light up the season. All right, 78 degrees. Kind of hard to get in the holiday season when it's so warm in November. Definitely, Steve. But we've got a cold friend. Today. We've got about 24 more hours of the warmth before we see that front move through. That front is scheduled to move through right around midnight uh, tomorrow night. and It'll make things windy and cooler. Let's take a look outside. How did we stack up today? Well, as we've been talking about, it was warm. 81 for the high. That's 10 degrees above the average high of 71 and just 5 degrees shy of the record set back in 1938. This morning, we really were warmer than average. 64 degrees this morning, and once again, we had a areas of fog and some morning clouds. That is going to be the case tomorrow as well because the humidity is, is rather high for the middle of November. In fact, we've got dew points right near 60 degrees, which is noticeable out there, especially by the morning hours. And here's a look at the future cast visibility for tomorrow morning. It won't be foggy out west toward uh, Del Rio, but around San Antonio up to New Braunfels and across parts of the hill country and along Highway 90 west there will be some fog that will limit visibility to less than a mile in places now that fog will first improve east of 35 but by 10 o'clock in the morning the fog should be out of here and we'll have another warm day very much like today where we've seen tons of sunshine this afternoon and it will be warm even a degree potentially warmer than today around 82 for the high in san antonio 84 for the high in del rio even up in the hill country where temperatures have yet to move Move into the 80s over the last couple of days. It's going to be 80 degrees in Kerrville and 86 in Catula. All right, but where's our cold front? I bet you can see where the snow is right now across parts of the northern Rockies. There's that front, and you can really see the temperature difference here. We in Texas are the warm spot around the nation, even warmer than Florida uh, today. But that cold front is up to our north. It's freezing in Cut Bank, and we're not going to see our first freeze of the season, so I don't want you to worry about that, but temperatures are going to be noticeably cooler by Thursday morning. Speaking of that front is expected to move through right around midnight tomorrow night into Thursday morning. Notice how there's not going to be much rain with this at all. Maybe an isolated shower or so, uh, and then it's going to get very windy by dawn Thursday morning. We could have wind gusts from the north up to 40 miles per hour in spots. So if you decorated early for Christmas outside, you may want to tie down uh, uh, those loose Christmas decorations and refrain from inflating those inflatables out there. Uh, but by the afternoon on Thursday, we're still going to have some cloud cover and highs will be in the 60s, in the low 60s at that, potentially even in the 50s in parts of the hill country. But as I just said, one more warm day for us. Patchy fog in the morning, 62 degrees, clearing skies by noon, and then it'll be sunny and warm tomorrow, 82. A bit of a breeze too, south winds gusting up to potentially 30 miles per hour before that front moves through and again that front will move through close to midnight so even as early as 10 o'clock we could have an isolated shower but again don't expect a lot of rain in the rain gauge with this front moving on through take a look at those morning lows 52 thursday and 45 friday morning will be in the 60s thursday and friday so sweater weather for about 48 hours before it becomes a little bit more mild into the weekend Looks like a great weekend. Thank you, Sarah. All right, so far it's just been an L.A. road trip. Yeah, it's just right because they had the Lakers on yeah. Sunday. Now they have the Clippers tonight. Can they improve on what they tried to do on Sunday when we come out? We'll have a live preview for you. Plus, when we come back, the Brandeis Broncos volleyball team headed to the state tournament for the first time in school history. A preview coming up. 
Spurs. San Antonio Spurs have now lost five of their last seven games. We'll try and avoid a three-game losing streak tonight when they take on the Clippers in Los Angeles still. They are coming off a hard-fought 114-106 to loss of the Lakers on Sunday at the Staples Center, despite the fact the Lakers were playing without LeBron James, despite the fact that Jante Murray had another triple-double. Meantime, the Clippers have been on a tear, winning seven in a row before losing to the Bulls on Sunday night. Now they look to get back on their winning track by taking it out on the Spurs tonight, despite the fact former Spur Kawhi Leonard has not suited up once this season following knee surgery. One report says he's done for the season. Here's the matchup tonight. Spurs and the Clippers, 930 tip. Early highlights for you tonight on the night beat. The Houston Texans go back to work this week after going into their bye week. One and eight this season. The only other team worse than the Texans are the Detroit Lions who actually scored a tie in overtime against the Steelers, 16 to 16. Now they will face the Tennessee Titans, who are one of the best teams in the NFL at eight and two and ten and a half point favors. What message does head coach David Culley have for the fans where it looks like they very well lose their ninth game in a row? Our football team is going to play better. And, and the big message is to our football team is that we got to be a smarter football team. Uh, we got to play better. And I think with all the stuff that we've done during the Seth Scout, uh, that you'll end up seeing us doing that. All right, we'll see. For the first time in school history, the Brandeis Broncos volleyball team has made it all the way to the state tournament. That's after they were able to sweep Austin Vandergriff Saturday afternoon, win the Region 4 championship, and now they get to travel to Garland this Friday where they'll face Bridgeland in the state semifinals. Bridgeland brings in a 39-11 record compared to the Broncos' 45-2. We were on campus Monday to get the Broncos preparing for their run at the state title. Definitely a lot of emotion. We're having a really good time. We love each other so much. Um, it's just fun to be able to like experience this type of stuff with your best friends. Um, I think that plays a huge role in how we're playing together and having that chemistry. It's really special, you know, we're the last team in San Antonio in our area, so it's like we're practicing while others are done, but it's really special to us. All right, the Broncos State semifinals game on Friday starts at 5 p.m. in Garland. KSAT Central Sports will be there. We'll visit with the Canyon Cougars tonight on the Night Beat. All right. Thank you, Greg. You got it. We'll be right back. Still have some delays on the west side at 1604, say Highway 151 down to 6 miles per hour northbound following a crash at Culebra. Also seeing delays on 151 itself, 18 minutes now to head from 410 to 1604. Also some other delays there on 1604 as well, Sarah. Thanks, Samuel. Yeah, we are going to have some morning fog tomorrow, a lot like this morning. It'll be breezy with winds from the south at 10 to 20, gusting up to 30 miles per hour, but becoming sunny and warm in the afternoon, 82 for the high. Then a cold front arrives at midnight, bringing an isolated shower or two, but not a lot of rain. Then we'll drop down to near 50 by Thursday morning. It'll be windy with gusts near 40 and highs only in the 60s. Thursday and Friday, a more mild weekend in store for us Saturday and Sunday. So 48 hours of fall. Yeah, kinda, yeah. <laughs> then back to springtime weather. Thanks for watching the news at five with us. World News up next. We'll see you back here at six.